So guys, you know I don't edit my videos. Oh my <laughs> so this God. intro is not rehearsed. <laughs> this is my wonderful friend, Jason Powell. Um, you can find him at jasonpowell.faith. He is, he's just brilliant. He has so many Aww. talents that I hate to even put him in a box and say he does X, Y, or Z. I can say that in the capacity I've worked with him in, uh, we have sang together on music that he has written, arranged, and performed on his own. Um, I'm telling you, this so much talent lies in this being. And with Aww. that, um, I really have a question for you that's <laughs> burning right. inside me. Of all of it's the things, the all of the things that you could be doing right now, like, um, what is your burning passion? What's my burning passion? Yeah. My burning passion is to inspire hearts and minds uh, through not only spoken word, through music and then empowering lives to actually be financially solvent. So for me, that looks like um, teaching people how to delve into their spiritual gifts um, and not only spiritual gifts in the biblical traditional sense, but spiritual gifts in terms of the divine treasure that we all have, um, how to cause that to be manifested in our lives. Mm. And then uh, housing is a thing that, that has been big in my heart. Um, real estate and how to get people in positions where they're able to not only build wealth for themselves but to be housed and properly uh, covered in times of financial stress and financial mm -hmm. turmoil thinking about what their future is going to be and establishing a sense of sufficiency uh, but I would say my passion at the core, like my, my heart's passion is to help people. It's to help people in mind, in body, in spirit, in soul, to create and manifest their ideal. I think that's awesome. <laughs> no, that's great because in the beauty in what you just said, because I could feel like where you're like, oh, I need to get back to the question. <laughs> I could just kind of feel it shift. And I think that that's great though, because it's almost like you got lost in the passion you know, of just talking about what it is that you desire to do. It's like, like, like you just put up this picture of your vision and you're trying, you're just going through and articulating it. And you know, the people that need that, they connect with you in that way. And they, they really see your heart um, it shining through as you talk about, you know, what it is that you desire to do. Um, I want to also just dig in, not just to your personal space to see obviously what your passion is. It didn't take digging deep to uh, get that to come to the surface. Oh <laughs> but um, t can you talk to us about some of the things that you have going on on your channel? Uh, what are some hot topics uh, right now for you that you're really, you know, as far as direction you're being led in? Yes. On JasonPowell.Faith and the YouTube channel, the main things that we're talking about is how to discover your purpose, how to walk in empowerment in your thought life and in your belief life, and how important the internal dialogue that we have with ourselves is to how our lives unfold, um, how we respond to challenges, how we respond to struggles, and the internal self-talk, which we could categorize as a form of consciousness, like what, mm -hmm. what is going on in our consciousness and how are we directing and steering the activity of our consciousness in ways that create more of what we want and less of what we don't and how are we riding the wave of the challenges that we experience uh, to leverage it uh, to produce greater good. Uh, that, that's, that's, that's really the essence of what you'll see on the channel but it's also I think the essence of what I'd love to communicate here. Oh, I think that's great. When you talk about those challenges, um, and we talked about this a little bit in the segment that you and I did on the reverse, but um, can you talk about that a little more and just kind of highlight? Because I think uh, when you talk about just different different aspects of consciousness and being consciously aware, challenges are not somebody that, they're, they're not an area that we traditionally gravitate to when we look at being conscious uh, as it pertains to our challenges. But a lot of times we just want to do away with those and get rid of them. Can you speak to that in any sense? Yeah, well, I'll speak to it like this. It's kind of an indirect way. When you look at the fact that we have airplanes, right? Airplanes haven't been around for a very long time. Although in our human awareness, it seems like they've always been here. But no, they actually haven't. 
humans existed for thousands of years before humans had the ability and the consciousness to understand the laws mm -hmm. of the universe that would enable the laws of thrust and lift to defy the law of gravity. So our ch challenges oftentimes are things that keep us stuck to the ground, things that keep us stuck in situations and frustrations that we don't feel like we can get out of. And there can be possibilities that are available to us in the realm of thought, in the realm of inner belief that we can access. For example, there might be a spiritual law of thrust and lift that can supersede the law of gravity in your life when you are able to imagine wow. yourself in a different state that your natural self hasn't gotten to yet. And when you can imagine that and, and be planted in that and root yourself in that and stir up the ideal in your awareness and in your mind, even while you're going through a problem and a struggle and a trial, it's literally a thrust and a lift in spirit that lifts you from the confines of the gravity of the present problem. So I think that's part of what we do in all of our spiritual work, uh, you know, how we transcend our problems and manifest the ideal. Wow. That was very profound. You know, just, wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit overtaken. I'm like, yes, 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 that's it. No, but that is such a key that we don't always consider. Um, even just looking at when you talk about, you use very practical things. You use the airplane and talk about the laws of gravity, very practical things that we've learned about since childhood. And even looking at the world around us to be able to explain these spiritual concepts. Uh, I think that's so, so effective today uh, in, in looking at how we can apply those same things that seem to have appeared only in our minds and, and really apply them in our everyday yeah. life. Yeah. yeah. And you know, what are the things that we're saying to ourselves? Like, I think that is huge. Um, when we take on the problem as, as, um, as something so visceral that we can't see anything else but the problem, we mm -hmm. aid the law of gravity in our spiritual lives. Um, and gravity has its, you know, good points, right? Like, sure. like you want to be stable. You want to be able to not like just float away. Like you want to have a life, right? <laughs> but then you also want to go different places and you want to soar too. So it's always about balance too. Oh yes. <laughs> oh yes. Balance is, is certainly a key that I talk a lot about on my channel is learning how to walk that middle road. And so I'm glad that you brought that up. Um, what are ways in which you found that make it easier for us to not only achieve because I found getting there isn't always the issue but a lot of times it's how do I maintain that through circumstances that come in life one for me has been giving myself the permission giving myself the grace to not always be on top of the mountain like <laughs> giving myself the permission to grieve or to be frustrated or to mm. be upset and then also giving myself that um, you know, healthy kick in the pants where I say, now that's enough. Yeah. Now it's time to move on. <laughs> but giving myself grace though to be in that space because we're not always, you know, feeling good. We're not always motivated. We're not always on top. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think we've got to give ourselves some grace. And then after you give yourself the grace, gently allow yourself to move forward. You know, don't be too hard on yourself. Sometimes yeah. we can be hard on ourselves. If you're not, you know, on 10, if you're not, you know, going hard, give yourself some grace. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. I think about that. I had um, some new clients that I was working with this week and I've ordered now, this is my second laptop that has died on me. <laughs> and so I haven't been able to type up a lot of things for them. And, um, you know, I'm really hard on myself and a stickler about, you know, meeting timelines and getting things done. But uh, I've even had to show myself grace, so I can say that certainly that even resonates for me because when we put that pressure on ourselves a lot of times, uh, we don't realize even how that projects out into the world, how it affects when we push ourselves to do things, when we know we need rest mm -hmm. and we say, nope, I'm going to do this anyway. Um, it can definitely impact the quality of work that we output to the point where it's like it would have been better you know, for our reputation or, you know, whatever else that we had not, you know, acted at a time when it really needed to be a season of rest or, you know, the, the reverse is also the case, wouldn't you say? How, um, like how? Where like if you are spending too much time in rest and it's time yes. for you to get up yes. and go, yes. that can be just as detrimental. Mm -hmm. You're not moving when that season of, you know, that ushering or that, that wind, fresh wind comes in and, and is pushing you to a place of moving. 
Yes, and so that speaks directly to kind of where I am in my own life right now. And that is not being afraid to heed that spiritual nudge to push you into new territory. We can get so comfortable. I know I can get so comfortable with how things are. And I like a sense of repetitive knowing what's going to happen. Like I love that sense of consistency. Mm -hmm. But that can also keep me and some of us in a box where we're not able to launch out into what we really are divinely intended to do and to be. Right. Um, and so, you know, allowing ourselves to press beyond that comfort zone sometimes can be a great challenge. And sometimes life kind of gives us that added push out of our comfort zone. Um, but it's important for us to trust spirit as spirit leads us on. I agree. That comfort zone, uh it's something else, you know, because it's like you said, gravity serves a, perfect, a purpose and that's kind of how I view the comfort zone. The comfort zone provides a, a space of stability that is essential um, in many aspects. We need a place to be able to go where we can rest, recharge, refuel, but at the same time, if we are unwilling to step out of that space in some sense, um, it can hold us back just the same. So tell us, what new territories are you getting into? How are you Ooh. pushing past your comfort zone into new limits? Oh, my Lord. It is understanding that what was stirring in my heart at 18, 19, 20, like this is what you're supposed to be doing, not, be, not being afraid to do it and to burn the bridges and to burn the <laughs> boats that would allow for retreat wow which is a big place to be in terms of like exercising that faith that you talk about and that spirituality that you've had for years and years okay well what are you going to do with it when the rubber meets the road and it's time to go to a different land maybe if it's not geographically maybe it's in your functionality going to a different land wow. doing something different or doing it in a way that is not confined to your comfort zone of the past but that you know is already in you like you know you know you were born to do this like what do you do like when you were a kid you colored the most amazing things like when you were a kid you had a passion about this area and then you know you grew older and things just kind of life had a way of telling you that no that's not good for you or no you're not good enough mm -hmm. for that and so we learn that we're not enough but but that's not the truth right the truth is that we are more than enough God in us is more than enough so leaning into that is a part of me stepping out of my comfort zone which will be seen in other ways in various aspects in the future awesome Jason is there any other way that people can get in contact with you any other services or tools that we've not talked about today that you want to be able to share uh, with this crew here watching and it, that way they can gain from all you have to offer. <laughs> sure, so as Danielle said, jasonpowell.faith is the way to reach me on YouTube, on the website www.jasonpowell.faith and also I'm working on a book called Affirming Faith and so yeah. what that has to do with is how do we affirm the God self that is in us? How do we get to a life where our faith is producing positive um, faith power-filled words, but not only in that aspect, but knowing that God loves God's beloved creation in all of its diversity. So it's affirming people from their walks of life, knowing that just how God made you, even if religion says, you know, that God blesses these people and God doesn't bless these people, um, you know, gay, straight, rich, poor, black, white, whatever it is, like God affirms and blesses you when you open yourself to the Christ consciousness or that spiritual reality that is the truth of who you are. Affirming faith is what we're working on. So stay connected with me because I'd love to share that with you in the future. Awesome. I can't wait to <laughs> read that one. I know that's going to be a bestseller because you are, you know, just sitting and talking to you. Obviously, we've gained so much from this time together. So I can only imagine being able to sit and take in those words <laughs> continually. Thank you so much. Thank you, Daniel. Absolutely. <laughs> it felt like we were on TV. <laughs> it did. Listen. It did.